Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Duke Carter. Tan is off today. We begin with sad news this Thanksgiving. New Orleans police say one person died in a fire this morning in the East Carrollton neighborhood. Firefighters say they arrived at the home in the 1500 block of Dante Street just after 730 this morning. Neighbors told them one person was trapped in the right side of a double. Firefighters forced their way into the home and found a 62 year old woman in a wheelchair near the front door. She died of her injuries. The people next door say they got out safely when their smoke alarms went off. New Orleans police say the fire was purportedly caused by an overloaded power strip. And turning now to Thanksgiving and the ways we celebrate differently here in the Big Easy. We're also watching for any travel issues as our friends and loved ones make it back into town. So far, no issues with the weather here and after that winter storm. Things are improving across the country as well. Your local weather expert Peyton Malone joins us with a look at potential flight delays. Things looking good out there, huh Peyton? Yeah, really, you know, we kind of lucked out today. We do still have some storms uh, rolling through the country. People everywhere are spending Thanksgiving with their families today, but what if you don't have someone to spend the holidays with? Volunteers at one local food pantry are making sure anyone hungry has food to eat and a friend to celebrate with. Megan Key brings us this story from Hammond. Since 1999, local food pantry are daily. This Thanksgiving meal is happening now until 1 p.m. at the Hand of Hope building. It's located at 1006 West Coleman Avenue, right next door to the Our Deli Bread food pantry. Well, a local Thanksgiving tradition is making, or I should say it's marking its 45th anniversary this year. Sheriff Marlon Guzman welcomed hundreds of people to the convention center for his Thanksgiving Day celebration. Not only are they serving up a full spread of food, the event features great music from artists like Roxanne Dupsey, James Andrews, and Grammy winners like Irma Thomas and Irvin Mayfield. It does really feel like it's serving a, a genuine need in the community. Um, these people seem incredibly grateful that this exists, um, and, and many of them have said it's something that they look forward to every year, which is wonderful to hear. The event also provides community service hours for the people who volunteer to help. A wonderful performance by the unforgettable 16 Stompers. They are in the Big Apple with a featured performance in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Shout out to Chocolate Thunder, our morning show film critic Alfred Richard. The all-male dance troupe has performed in the parade twice before. They're ordinary men with extraordinary moves, which you're seeing right there. That's their motto, and they've been turning it since 2009. The parade itself almost rolled without those iconic flying balloons, though. Mark Liverman reports from New York. Thanksgiving Day got another Thanksgiving tradition for some people, at least. Get this, it's standing in line for those Black Friday deals. Well, we found a few chairs set up early this morning at the Best Buy on Vets with barricades set up for the lines they're expecting soon. So if you're looking for a roundup of a black, best Black Friday deals, we have several stores you can check out on our website. We found more people trying to make those last minute groceries for Thanksgiving. While some stores are either closed or they're running out of things, the Robert's on St. Claude was well stocked when we stopped by earlier today. And that's something shoppers were thankful to see. I worked and had family in, so I was busy and couldn't get to shopping and Robert's always opens on Thanksgiving. It's only um, about a half a mile from my house, so it's very convenient. Many places that did open today had shortened hours, so if you need to make a run, you better do it quick or at least call first to make sure the store is open. This year, Thanksgiving Day is also opening day for horse racing at the fairgrounds, but for many people there, it's not about placing bets, it's about being seen. Check out the crowds dressed to the nines for ladies. Fancy hats are a must. The spectators and racetrack officials are happy to restore the Thanksgiving Day tradition this year. One trainer told our partners at the Times Picayune New Orleans Advocate that there's a buzz in the air and people are excited that it's back to the way that it used to be. We'll have much more from the fairgrounds coming up tonight on the Eyewitness News at 10. In sports, it's Saints Falcons rematch day. And this is a big day and a big one on top of that because that embarrassing loss in the dome is still pretty fresh on y'all's minds. You might say we're still a little bit salty as the brine for a turkey. As the Saints hope to serve the Falcons in L at their own home, 
we have a look back at the spirited rivalry that stretches back 52 years. Welcome back. No matter how much we eat for Thanksgiving dinner and the seconds and the thirds and the pie and the another slice of pie and another pie, we will still be hungry for one thing. Tonight's rematch against the Atlanta Falcons. The game a few weeks ago in the dome was pretty painful. Now we're heading to Atlanta with a big chip on our shoulders. The Saints and Falcons have faced off 101 times, and when you look at the all-time record, the Dirty Birds have five more wins over the Saints. One of those matchups provided ESPN its highest ever rating at the time. The first game back in New Orleans, get this, after Hurricane Katrina. For most field goals, look out, right through, a kick by Steve Gleason. You just can't get enough of that play. An iconic Saints-Falcons moment 13 years ago on September 25th, 2006. Steve Gleason blocking a punt led to the black and gold touchdown. The moment was memorialized in the rebirth statue that was added to the dome in 2012. The very first game in the rivalry was held on November 20th, 1967. The Saints actually won that one, 27 to 24. And we also just want to take a second to point out that tonight's matchup is the third NFL game on today, November 28th, which of course talks about that game in Atlanta, or should say deals with the Falcons. Anywho, a lot of you have family in town for Thanksgiving, and after the gathering, they're going to be heading back to places that, well, probably won't have as delicious food as we do here. So can you fly with your to-go plate? Well, that depends. Solid foods, foods are fine, so turkey or ham, if you prefer, those are allowed. So our dressing and stuffing, however you want to call that, even pies are okay. But TSA agents may need to poke it or prod it to make sure it's not made up out of explosives, so don't get upset if your pie is messed up. Things that are like liquid or paste, well, you're going to have to leave those behind. So mashed potatoes, cranberry sauce, gravy, you pretty much get the picture. Peyton? <laughs> Thanksgiving means we are just one day away from the opening of the Audubon Zoo Lights holiday attraction. Once again, this year, Channel 4 and Children's Hospital are sponsors of the event. It features holiday light displays, music, food, visits with Santa, and even a nightly snowfall. Audubon Zoo Lights opens Friday and runs through December 30th. You can buy your tickets online for 15 bucks in advance or $10 for Audubon members. You can find out more about it by visiting WWLTV.com and clicking on links. Coming up, it's one of the top stories nationally in recent weeks. People dying or getting sick, and it's all blamed on vaping. Now, more officials are joining the effort to restrict the sale or even ban the devices. We have a look at that coming up. One governor has signed the first statewide permanent ban on flavored vaping products in the country. Several states and towns across the U.S. have also passed restrictive measures as vaping-related illnesses continue to rise. And researchers hope more will follow suit. Wolf de Yaman reports from Washington.